There are a few final notes here to, to make about standard deviation and variance. So variance, a lot of students in a basic stats class are like, why are we even learning this? Um, it does get used a lot more in more advanced statistics. So we just want you to kind of have seen the term, be moderately familiar with it. It's the standard deviation squared. It's actually used more in advanced statistics. In upper level stats classes, they don't ever really use standard deviation. All they ever use is variance. We, as a beginning class, will end up using standard deviation way more often. That's fine. So standard deviation is a measure of how spread out the data set is, as so is the variance, right? But it measures the average distance from the mean. That's why we kept saying give or take, right? Give or take from that mean, right? That's the interpretation piece. Now you'll notice there are these big formulas. We don't care too much about them other than to remind ourselves that that's the population size down there. That's why it's a capital letter. And of course, this is sigma squared, this is sigma. You take the square root of the variance and you will have the standard deviation. And we note that the square root of sigma squared is sigma, right? You take the square root of variance and you will have standard deviation. We've mentioned that before, but just another recap. And then same thing down here, that little guy is the sample size minus one, it's called the degrees of freedom. And we'll learn more about that a little bit later because it has value for us later on. And you'll note that if you take the standard deviation and you square it, you get the variance, which we again already learned, but just a little reminder so that we have those two notes. Some more important notes. Um, variance and standard deviation are always non-negative. All right, now what does that mean? That means that they are greater than or equal to zero. So um, positive or zero. Now I know what you're thinking, zero. Could you have a standard deviation of zero? Oh, sure you could. Let's, let's jump down to this example and we'll come back. <laughs> so is it possible to have a list of numbers that have a mean of 74 but a standard deviation of zero? And the answer is yes, we just said. We could have a standard deviation of zero. How would you do it? Well, let me give you an example. Suppose your class is this. Hmm? If all students score the same on the reason I picked 74 was that that was that quiz. So if all values are the same, the standard deviation is zero. And if the standard deviation is zero, then the variance, which is the standard deviation squared, would be zero squared, which is also zero. <laughs> So it's possible for both the standard deviation and the variance to be zero, but it's rare, right? Because this is not happening to us that often. All values are the same, so it does not happen very often. Or really hardly ever. So by non-negative, what they mean is positive, maybe zero, but it'd be very, very, very unlikely for it to be zero, right? This does not happen very frequently. Now we just saw in the previous example what we wrote at the very end, which is that the variance and the standard deviation are not resistant. They get affected by having outliers, right? So they are not resistant, that's what this part is saying, and that means that they should not be used for skewed data. We'll talk more about that in section 3-4. Um, the standard deviation and has the same units, either one, right? So the, the sigma, which is the population one, or the s, which is the sample one, has the same units as your original data set. So in our pet example, it was just pets. Maybe it could be dollars, inches, feet, you know, whatever. <laughs> and then variance would be the units squared, which doesn't interpret well. So we don't use this for interpretation. Do not use for interpretation <laughs> because it doesn't really mean anything. Um, 
the, the meaning is that the larger the variance is, the more spread out the data is. That's the meaning. And then just remember that StatCrunch in particular calls, and, and other computer programs do too, but StatCrunch calls the sigma and sigma squared values, which are the population values, unadjusted. Right? So when I'm in StatCrunch, right here, I found regular variance and standard deviation. Let me edit that. So I found those three, but let me scroll down. There they are, unadjusted variance and unadjusted standard deviation. So those are the population values. So those are saying, hey, I don't know if this data set's a sample or a population. So if it's a sample, you use the regular standard deviation, but if it's a population, you use the unadjusted standard deviation. On the calculator, it just shows up as sigma. So if I grab on the calculator, it'll say little sigma on it, right? See 23.644. See, and over here in StatCrunch, it's called unadjusted, but they're the same thing, right? They're the population values. So that was just a reminder of that. All right, so we've already seen this example on this page. That's great. Let's move to an example that usually throws a lot of people. So remember that when you're measuring standard deviation, you're measuring distance from the center, distance from the mean deviation. It's written right here in the little table. Maybe it would be worthwhile to highlight. The standard deviation represents distance from the mean, from the center, right? The mean is the center. Okay, now let's look at these three graphs. We want to consider these following data sets that all have the same center, and that center would be four. You can see it right here in the graphs, right? See how the center is four for every single one of them? Right? It's the middle, right? The mean is the center or the middle, right? Hmm, okay. So now which one of these graphs has the largest standard deviation and which one has the smallest standard deviation? Hmm, interesting question. Okay, so the smallest standard deviation would be the least spread out from four, because four is your mean. The largest standard deviation would be the most spread out from four, because again, four is that mean. Hmm. All right. So when you look at the three graphs, which one's the least spread out, the least far away from four? The answer is actually graph number three. Graph number three right here has the least spread, right? Because most of it's piled up around four. Very little of it is on the one and the seven, which are the farthest away from four, right? So the least spread is graph number three. It has more piled in the center, which is four, and very little at the edges of one and seven. So this is the least spread out graph. Hmm. All right, by that same token, which graph has the most spread? Okay, well looking, it's gotta be one of these two that's left. Spread out is actually number two. This one is the most spread. Now why? Because if you're thinking about it in terms of like spreading peanut butter, like this graph number one's got a lot in all the other bins. True, but it has a lot in the center, whereas this graph does not, right? Remember what you're measuring with standard deviation. You're measuring distance from the middle, right? So this has almost not, well, very little, very little at four, 
right? The mean, which was four. I'll put X bar on those. <laughs> and it has a lot, right? It has super high amounts piled on, right? Because those are frequencies of nine there. A lot piled on at the edges. And that, of course, is what standard deviation measures, is distance from the center. This one has by far the most spread out because most of the stuff is far away from that center. Right? Very little of it's in, at, at the actual center. And that means that graph number one is the middle child. <laughs> so this is the middle amount of spread. Right? It has more in the center than two did, but less in the center than four did, or than three did, sorry. More in the center, oops, center at x equals four, x bar equals four, but less at the edges. which is what makes that graph the middle graph. 